Arter Hawkwind. He's a character that everybody that has read The Wheel of Time is aware of, but most people don't know his true story. Today, we'll be telling the story of Hawkwind's rise, his fall, and we'll break down his legacy over the entire Wheel of Time story. So sit back and relax as I tell you the story of the High King, Arter Hawkwind. Quick thank you to the video sponsor, Audible.com. You can grab a free audiobook just for being one of my viewers by heading to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nadeless and sign up for the free trial. You'll get to keep the audiobook regardless of whether you keep the service or not, and you greatly help the channel by doing so. Thank you to Audible. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through a memory of light. If you have not finished the whole series yet, this video isn't for you, because we're going to spoil the shit out of it. So, you have been warned. The story of Arter Hawkwing starts in the year FY912. Now, to put all of this in perspective, the Wheel of Time date scales are divided into several periods. For the purposes of the main storyline, this starts with the Age of Legends, and then the period of the breaking of the world, followed by the after-breaking period, denoted by A.B. That lasted for roughly 1,300 years and was ultimately ended with the Trolloc Wars. This was the period of the Ten Nations, the Netherin being the most famous of them. Now, after the end of the Trolloc Wars began the Free Years, denoted date-wise by the F.Y. before the date. Now, this period lasted for roughly 1,100 years and ended with the dissolution of Arter Hawkwing empire. The period after that is the New Era, which is the year the main story takes place in. For reference, the story begins in 998 of the New Era. Arter Pendrag Tanrial was born in the nation of Shandala in FY 912, almost 1,000 years prior to the events of Winter Night. Now, Arter grew up in the royal palace in Shandala, son of the king Merdrin Pendrag Margor and queen Malinde Pendrag. Shandala was a small nation at the time, surrounded by much larger and much more powerful nations on all sides. It occupied the region just to the west of the modern city of Tyrian and just to the south of the territories controlled by Tarvalon. Cainbaran and Tova were two large rivals right next to Shandala, and they were far larger nations. The nation of Shandala was small, but it maintained its independence through a professional, well-trained army and its proximity to Tarvalon and the Aes Sedai and the mediation they would bring. Now, not much is known about Arter Pendrag Tenriel's upbringing other than he was raised as a prince and as a young man, he was tutored in the arts of combat. He served in the standing army for Shandala as a soldier and he became a captain in the army in his youth. In free year 937, he married Ameline Tagora, although it's unknown where she was from but it's likely that it was some sort of strategic marriage based on the fact that Arter was a prince of a nation. Now, it appears that Arter Hawkwind had a fairly uneventful upbringing until two years into his marriage to Ameline in FY 937, when both of his parents succumbed to a black fever epidemic that swept the continent. Their deaths put the 27-year-old Arter Pendrag Tanriol firmly in control of the small nation of Shandala. He took over control of the nation just as a new problem would face the continent. The story of Arter Hawkwind wouldn't be complete without also telling the story of Ware Amalasan. Born at roughly the exact same time as Arter, Ware was raised in the nation of Darmovan, a nation on the modern map that would have covered the nations of Arthurban, Taravan, Plain. Now, Guerra Malasan began to channel around the age of 1920, and he would become one of the most powerful false dragons in history. After channeling for roughly six years, he declared himself the dragon reborn in the pre year 937, the same year as Arter's marriage to Amalan, and two years prior to the death of the king and queen of Shandala and the rise of Arter to the throne. Now, the black fever epidemic had spread around the continent over the course of several years, and it killed more than 10% of the population, an estimated 20 to 30 million people. Now, this level of death literally decimated the population and threw some of the power structures in the continent into chaos. It was the perfect time for a false dragon to make advances. After declaring himself a dragon reborn, Wera Malasan began conquering territories as he moved tier. He called his followers the Children of the Dragon, and within just two years, he 
had conquered his native country of Darmovan, but also the nations of Balasun and Alam IV. Now this began what would later be known as the War of the Second Dragon. By free year 943, six years into his conquest, he had conquered Dolan, Sandara, Barashel, Burgundy, Karandor, Morania, Nerevan, and Shiota. He had also laid siege to Bar Matting and conquered the city within weeks. He even made it as far to lay siege to the Stone of Tyr itself, hoping to take Kalindor, but was turned back on the off chance that 39 Aes Sedai had taken refuge in the stone and helped in its defense. In a few short years, Weramalasan had raised a standing army of almost 200,000 troops, conquered more than a third of the continent, and stood on the verge of claiming Kalindor. The conquering of territory and the raising of the standard of the Dragon Reborn alarmed and mobilized the rest of the continent. The Aes Sedai, eager to capture and gentle the false dragon, raised a number of coalition armies to combat Weramalasan, but all of them were soundly defeated, except those led by the young Ardor Pandrag Tanriel. He was always able to escape or stalemate Amalasan's armies. In free year 942, after years of fighting against Amalasan, Ardor was given the nickname Hawkwing because of the swiftness that he moved his armies around. He proved to be a tactical genius, as well as a well-loved commander and king. He gained notoriety around the world for his ability to fight against Amalasan when no one else could come even close, and he ended up becoming the coalition leader of the armies fighting the false dragon. In free year 943, six years into the fighting, the war was not going well for the forces opposed to the false dragon. Because of the plague of black fever, many nations were very depleted of troops to fight, and the Stone of Tyr was being besieged and barely hanging on. While maintaining the Siege of Tyr, Amalasan invaded to the north the Talmor and Kodomar, and began conquering them as well. Now his successes led many to believe that only the true Dragon Reborn could have achieved this much, and riots and rebellions began breaking out among all of the unconquered countries, like Masinashar and Dal Kalei, as well as the powerful nation of Aldashar. Defeating Amalasan did not even look possible, and the only commander to have any success against him was Hawkwing, but he had never even scored a decisive victory. So the stakes were high, and the table was set for a final climactic battle as Amalasan and a portion of his forces were in Kodamar near Dolvain Pass, which is near the border with Kova. Hawkwing's army and scouts happened to come across Amalasan's army by chance, and a battle commenced. Now at first, it looked like the outnumbered Hawkwing would be easily defeated. He took a daring move and split his army into three, charging yet behind into the flanks of Amalasan, and was able to split Amalasan's forces and then had a direct charge at Amalasan's command area, where he and the Aes Sedai were able to capture and shield the false dragon. With Amalasan captured, his army fell apart and the rout began, with the false dragon finally being defeated and in the custody of the Aes Sedai. After the defeat of Amalasan, Hawkwing and the Aes Sedai made their way to Tarvalon with the captured false dragon so that he could stand trial and be gentle for being a false dragon. Now at this time, Tarvalon was far more powerful as a political entity, and it controlled vast amounts of territory, unlike the Tarvalon of the main story. Hawkwing and the Aes Sedai entered into Tarvalon territory to deliver the false dragon, presumably with the permission of the Aes Sedai transporting the Malasan, but the fact that Hawkwing entered Tarvalon territory without her permission, the Amerlin seat, Bonwin, was furious that he brought his army with him. After chastising him, she gave him only five days to rest and leave Tarvalon. However, during this time, Amalasan's followers attacked the city, attempting to save him. That fighting made it all the way into the city and at the very foot of the White Tower itself. Again, Hawkwing saved the Aes Sedai, attacking the attacking army and routing it, effectively saving the city of Tarvalon from sacking and protecting the Aes Sedai. Now, rather than being grateful, however, Bonwin was even more furious. Hawkwing left with his army, but they parted on bad terms, and Bonwin used her power as Amerlin to provoke Camber and Tova and Kodomar to launch attacks on Shandala, as she convinced the leaders of those countries that Hawkwing was a power-hungry conqueror, which leads to the next phase of Arthur Hawkwing's life.
In free year 943, attacks came from all sides on the tiny nation of Shangala. Arthur Hawkwing was forced to fend off attacks from the neighboring nations of Cain Baron, Tova, and Potomar at the behest of Bonwin. Not only was Hawkwing able to defend against these attacks, but he went on the offensive and was able to defeat and conquer all three nations. Thus, due to her meddling, Hawkwing became what Bonwin said he was, a conqueror. Within weeks of Tova's invasion of Shandala, Hawkwing had conquered more than half of the nation of Tova. Ilianda sent troops to reinforce Tova, while Aldashar sent reinforcements to Cain Baron, and Talmor reinforced Kodamar, thus bringing in three more nations into the conflict. They were all soundly defeated by Hawkwing, and he began to consolidate the territory that he had conquered and expanded the size of his armies with troops from the captured nations. Now these armies were eager to join him as he was known for treating those who served under him well and for allowing advancement regardless of station at birth. He was also world famous as a commander and a leader due to his defeat of Guerra Malasan. At first, Hawkwing fought primarily defensively and consolidated territory as he conquered it. But as more and more nations attacked Shandala, Hawkwing began to expand his empire, and eventually he conquered nearly the entire continent, with only Aldashar holding on to its sovereignty at the time. Now during this period of consolidation, Arthur Hawkwing was forced to deal with a number of personal struggles that affected his rule. His wife, Ameline, gave birth to twins in three year 942, right before the defeat of Guerra Malasan. These children were named Amira and Moder, and they were the light of Hawkwing's life. Ameline would give birth to another son and another daughter, but their names are lost in history. In free year 959, during Hawkwing's Wars of Conquest, his son Moder was killed in battle at the age of 17, which absolutely devastated Hawkwing and his wife. Worse, two years later, in free year 961, Ameline and Hawkwing's three remaining children were all murdered Killed with poison. Grief stricken, Hawkwing went into a rage, believing that the king of Aldashar, Noel Ramadar, was responsible for his family's deaths. Hawkwing became extremely ruthless in attacking Aldashar. This would begin what would later be known as the Dark Years of Hawkwing's life. During his fighting with Aldashar, Hawkwing refused to accept the surrenders of Aldashari generals, as he had with other territories when they had surrendered. He massacred the generals and their armies instead. And when he finally defeated the nation of Aldashar and they surrendered, rather than making the king a provincial governor as he had with other conquered rulers, he had Ramadar put to death and he exiled the other nobles of Aldashar. His brutality to the people of Aldashar was so bad that Hawkwing's Aes Sedai advisor, Cho and So, left his service in protest. However, with the defeat of Aldashar, this did complete the 19 year consolidation of his rule. And at this point, all but the territory around Tarvalon was conquered in the west. Still in a rage, though, Hawkwing turned his attentions to the Aiel Waste and launched an invasion. However, this was ill-conceived and poorly planned, as the Aiel would not face Hawkwing when he was in battle. But rather, they made guerrilla attacks on his supply lines and on his flanks, and they allowed the Waste to kill his forces. He was forced to retreat back into the Westlands, the first true defeat of his career. As he returned from his ill-fated invasion of the Aiel Waste, Arthur Hawkwing, at the age of 54, unexpectedly met a woman named Tamika, who quickly fell in love with her, pulling him out of his dark moods. Now, she had a calming effect on Hawkwing and reignited his passion for life, and her marriage to Hawkwing helped usher in an era of peace. After completing his conquest of the Westlands, the land settled into a great peace that would last for almost 23 years. There was almost no war during this period, and it was a golden age of sorts for Hawkwing's rule. During this time, he created political structures to rule his vast empire by creating provinces and organizing the rule of them. With Aes Sedai help, he mediated disputes, and life was generally good for residents of the Westlands. Although there was peace during this period, it was not completely without fighting. Over the years, Hawkwing was forced to put down seven different rebellions in the empire, as former kingdoms and nobles, upset at the new power structures, tried to retake their kingdoms. These rebellions were quickly put down, and on one occasion, the people themselves overthrew the rebellion without Hawkwing's intervention. During this period of peace, specifically the first 11 years of it, the lands of the Westlands made large steps forward. The lands of the empire were safe for travel, public works projects were started, new cities were built, and quality of life across the continent 
priest. Carter Hawkwing repaired his relationship with the Aes Sedai at this time, and he even added Aes Sedai into his ruling bureaucracy. However, all of this would change in three year of 973. In free year 973, a man named Jawin Morad came to Arthur Hawkwing's court and quickly became Hawkwing's highest ranking counselor. He held that position until Hawkwing's death and would become the most influential advisor in the empire. And what wasn't known at the time is that this was actually a Shamael, released temporarily from his prison and determined to break apart as much of Hawkwing's empire as he could. Shamael convinced Utter Hawkwing to dismiss all of the Aes Sedai in the Empire and lay siege to Tarvalon itself, as he provided a type of proof that said that it was the Aes Sedai, and specifically Bonwin, that had poisoned his previous wife and children. Now that wasn't actually proven, and it was likely that it was Dark Friends set up by the Shadow to actually poison them, so this was probably staged. By free year 975, Hawkwing had laid siege to Tarvalon, and that siege would not be lifted for the rest of his life. After defeating a massive Shadowspawn invasion in free year of 987, Hawkwing was reinvigorated and was planning two new military campaigns under the guidance of Jawin Morat. In free year 992, he had two fleets constructed, one in the south and one in the west of the Empire. These fleets that were built were absolutely massive, consisting of over 2,000 different ships and more than 300,000 soldiers and settlers apiece. The Western fleet sailed across the Arth Ocean and landed on the shores of the continent of Shanchan, where they did end up conquering the locals and building a new empire. That's a story for another video. However, they were never heard of in the Westlands ever again. That fleet was led by Hawkwing's son, Luther Pendrag Modwin. The Southern fleet was led by one of Hawkwing's daughters, and it was meant to invade Shara. Now that fleet did land on the Eastern shore of Shara, but the ships were later seen burning, and no one from that expedition was ever heard from again. Now, these seeming failures were orchestrated by Ishamayal to weaken the unity of the Empire, take away its numbers, and so the chaos would come upon Hawk. After the failures of his two invasion fleets, and the fact that he was rapidly increasing in age, Hawkwing became ill in three year 99 at the age of 82. Through the manipulation by Ishamayel, he refused Aes Sedai healing at the end of his life that could have saved him. Ishamayel also arranged for the deaths of his last remaining daughter, Lawinda, and her son, Tur Sir Pandrag Mashira, just days before Hawkwing's death. Additionally, after Hawkwing died, Ishamayel played the three remaining advisors who would have taken the throne against each other and had all three killed, effectively plunging the empire into civil war as the individual provinces broke away and became independent. Arthur Hawkwing's legacy is that he was one of the most revered and respected historical figures in the West. He was the only person to ever truly unite the continent, and the provinces from his empire would later become the nations that existed in the modern story, like Camelon, Tyre, and Tyr. His bloodlines built the Shan Chan Empire. Also, it is claimed by the city-state of Mayan that turned Sir Pendrag Mashira, the grandson of Arthur Hawkwing, survived being killed despite everybody thinking he was dead, and he turned up in Mayan, where he was made a figurehead and his bloodline leads to the current first of Mayan, now Barrow. If not for Ishamayel's meddling, Arthur Hawkwing would have likely established an empire that would have lasted centuries and would have united the world. This is obviously against the wishes of the Dark One, but Arthur Hawkwing was the king the final time when humanity was united all the way up until Randolph IV united the Westlands up for the last time. Arthur Hawkwing's story does not end with his death, however. Arthur Hawkwing's soul was bound to the Horn of the Lear. Now, while he isn't in the world of the living, his soul is bound to Teleron Riyad and is called forth when the Horn of the Lear is sounded to fight. This happens first in Falma when Matt Coffin blows the horn. Hawkwing rides against the Shan Chan. Later, he's called forth again when Olver blows the Horn of the Lear in the last battle and he rides against the forces of the Shadow and helps defeat them. Now, Hawkwing was one of the most powerful Tavirin of all time, rivaling even Randolph. It is said that being around him, you could feel the threads of the pattern tugging at you. It's that special status in the pattern and his great deeds that have him tied to the horn. He recognizes the Dragon Reborn as well as another soul that's tied to the wheel, and he acknowledges that he has fought beside and against the Dragon Reborn in other times of the wheel, which is an interesting thought. Later at the last battle, Matt actually introduces Arthur Hawkins to Tuon as well, 
having had her meet her long gone descendant. So that is the story of Arthur Hawkwick. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments of the video and let me know if you want more videos like this one explaining the history of the Wheel of Time world. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. Also, huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you make more content like this possible, you can see all of my top tier patrons on the screen. If you would like to become a patron, check out my Patreon page. That link is in the description of the video. Make sure to check out one of these videos right here that you might also like. And thank you all for watching. Awesome.